Many times when we think of racism, we tend to think of direct actions of people of a dominant group towards a subordinate group. These actions tend to cause physical, mental, and emotional harm. But perhaps one of the most subtle forms of racism is environmental racism. Environmental racism is the way which minority groups are burdened with a disproportionate number of hazards, including toxic waste facilities, garbage dumps, and other sources of environmental pollution. This type of racism is quietly practiced through the passing of bills and laws that allow companies such as coal plants, landfills, and toxic waste facilities to be built in places that are disproportionately in areas where low income and people of color live. These facilities fill the air with harmful contaminants and lead to health issues. But what does this really look like? Environmental racism can be seen in people drinking contaminated groundwater, children playing on school playgrounds next to a plant producing toxic emissions, people being exposed to asbestos and lead in older homes and schools, or corporations attempting to build nuclear waste dumps on protected native lands because those lands are not protected by tough state environmental regulations. Coal power plants are some of the worst offenders, and according to a recent NAACP report, 39% of people that live within three miles of a coal power plant are people of color, and those coal plants that are in urban areas are overwhelmingly placed in communities of color. Worldwide, the dumping of toxic waste in developing countries is prevalent due to lower environmental standards in developing countries. The power of multinational corporations the lack of power in developing countries, and putting corporate profit before people. E-waste, or the dumping of discarded and used electronics, is causing a global concern too. 20 to 50 million tons of e-waste are generated each year globally, and approximately 80% of e-waste is exported to Asia each year. The Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, estimates that only 15 to 20% of e-waste is recycled yearly. Examples of health issues related to environmental racism include asthma and respiratory illnesses, lead poisoning, and higher rates of lung cancer in those living within close proximity to coal-producing plants. The highest rates of asthma tend to be in low socioeconomic communities and communities of color. Asthma results from exposure to air pollution, cigarette smoke, dust and pesticides. According to the Center for Disease Control, or CDC, Asthma is most prevalent among multiracial populations at 14.8%, Puerto Rican Hispanics at 14.2%, non-Asian Blacks at 9.5%, while asthma rates among non-Hispanic Whites is at 7.8%. When it comes to exposure to air pollution that can contribute to asthma and other respiratory illnesses, the CDC found that racial and ethnic minority groups who tend to live in urban areas experience greater disparity in illness. Toxic facilities tend to be built in environments that have little resources and political power to protect their communities. The Environmental Protection Agency is meant to help protect the environment and people from the harmful effects of facilities, but has proven to be unresponsive. According to the Center for Public Integrity, more than nine of every 10 times that communities have turned to it for help, the EPA has either rejected or dismissed their Title VI complaints. Title VI is part of the 1964 Civil Rights Act that states public funds cannot be used to encourage discrimination. In the EPA's 22-year history of processing almost 300 environmental discrimination complaints, the office has never once made a formal finding of a Title VI violation, and 95% of the time, communities of color that live in communities with polluting facilities have their filed claims of civil rights violations denied by the Environmental Protection Agency. This is a complicated picture, and our dependence on energy production and electronics makes it difficult to walk away from. But that shouldn't mean that disproportionate numbers of lower socioeconomic groups and people of color should have to pay the higher price. So, what other examples of environmental racism can you think of that impact you or your community? What is the long-term impact on society when groups of people continue to experience environmental racism? And how does our current lifestyle contribute to environmental racism? Is change possible?